The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts and... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And year after year, at market after market, independent tobacco experts... Men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 50, say you're not a bit of 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 a bit of
A little thing like that. Let me see that list, Mary. Here. Can I help you, young man? Help me? Yes. You've been standing in front of this counter for ten minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Well, that's understandable. You're confused because it's Christmas time. You've got the Christmas spirit. You're doing your Christmas shopping, and you're looking at so many different things. Well, that explains why I'm confused in December. What about the other months? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know about that. I'm a coal miner by trade. I'm just doing this to help pay the fine. Oh, well, gee, I'd like to get something for my parents. Oh, your mother and father, eh? Yeah, how did you know? <laughs> I, uh, I just figured it out. Oh, I know. I think I'll get my mother a new corset. Well, don't you think she, she should come down and pick out her own corset? Oh, Mother hasn't left the house for three days. Is she sick? No, the string broke on her old one and she can't get through the door. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah. We were spending a quiet evening at home when... Boing! Oh, my goodness. Was anybody hurt? No, but my father got pinned to the wall. <laughs> anyway, wrap me up that size 44 corset, and I'll take it with me. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, let's see, uh, let's see that list again, Mary. Oh, yes, a dozen blades for Phil, some handkerchiefs for Rochester, some little toy for Dennis. You told me at Ciro's last night you were going to buy Dennis a grand piano. Last night, I had four glasses of Muscatel. <laughs> I'm all right now, so where's the toy department? Oh, wait a minute, Jack. What about your producer, Robert Ballin? Oh, yes. I don't know what to get him. Oh, Jack, look. Why don't you get him one of those new canvas golf bags? Yeah, he'd love that. And it's only $15. Oh. <laughs> Gee, I just happen to think he, he doesn't play golf. Well, why don't you give him a nice cocktail shaker? Say, say, that sounds good. And it's only $12.50. Hmm. I just happen to remember, he doesn't drink either. Uh, what else can I buy him? A knife and fork. Let's see you get out of that. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? I'll think of something. Now, let's see. Hi, Jack. Long time no see. Huh? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, hello. Come on, Mary. Uh, who was that? Oh, he's a racetrack tout I used to see at Santa Anita. You remember we ran into him at the Union Station last year? Oh, yes. Say, Mary, I want to get a watch for my sponsor. I wonder where the jewelry department is. Well, there's a floor walker. Ask him. Oh, yes. Oh, floor walker. Floor walker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell me where the jewelry department is? Yes, but you'll hate yourself in the morning. Look, I didn't ask for any wisecracks. You either give me a civil answer or I'll report you. Now, where is the jewelry department? It's on the third floor. Thanks. Like fun it is. <laughs> Never mind. I'll find it myself. Hmm. It's a fine store to do business with. You walked in here, Lotus Blossom. Nobody dragged you. <laughs> oh, quiet. Come on, Mary. We'll find it. Mary, let's go upstairs and get that watch for my sponsor. We'll take one of these elevators. Well, number five is just about to go up. Yeah, let's hurry. Hey, uh, Jack. Hey, Jack. Huh? Oh. Oh, it's you again. Yeah. Come here a minute. What is it? Where are you going? Upstairs. Which elevator are you taking? Uh, number five. Uh-uh. What? Take number three. It'll beat five to the top by two and a half floors. But, but number five is about to go up. I know, I know, but she's carrying too much weight. Well, I 
don't know. What do you think about number one? Uh uh-uh. uh. Local. Can't go the distance. <laughs> oh, well, what about number two? Slow starter. Well, it really doesn't make any difference. I'm only Christmas shopping. Okay. It's your money. <laughs> I wonder where he gets his information. Jack, are we going up or not? So far, all you bought is a pair of shoelaces. Well, at least the... Say, Mary, I was thinking. Maybe you were right about those plastic tips. I think they're better than the metal ones. I'll go back and change them. Oh, Jack. Come on, I'm going to change those shoelaces. Pardon me, miss. Uh, would you mind waiting on me, please? Why, yes, sir. What can I do for you all? <laughs> well, well, honey, child. Where y'all from? Alabama. You know, that's down south. Well, corn my pone and mint my julep. Shake hands with a fella rebel. (laughs) Oh, are you from the south, too? Am I from the south? Just run your hands through my hair and feel those bold weevils. (laughs) Well, I declare. See, wait a minute. Your voice is awful familiar. Haven't I heard it before? Well, I sure you have, babe. I'm Phil Harris, the Texas Toscanini. <laughs> well, imagine that. Just wait till I tell the other girls that I waited on Phil Harris. Now, what would you like to buy? Well, sugar, I don't know. How would y'all like to see something nice in lingerie? Now, honey, <laughs> you know you shouldn't throw me a line like that. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, everybody notices it. <laughs> uh, you know, Mr. Harris, you're so much different than I pictured you to be. On the radio, you're such a braggart. You sound so conceited. I know, but it ain't really like that, honey. But Benny's writers always write me that way. His writers? Yeah, every time they get a hold of a beautiful hunk of man, they make him conceited. <laughs> now, look, let's see what I can get for my wife. Oh, I know. Give me one of them negligees there. Yes, sir. Shall I wrap it as a gift? Yeah, and fix the package so she can't peek into it. You know, seal it over with some of that there scotch and soda tape. <laughs> I'll have it wrapped up for you in just a minute. But look, mister, plastic tips are metal tips. What difference does it make? Well, it's a gift, and I want it to be right. But those other shoelaces are more expensive. I don't care. I'll take them anyway. When he buys shoelaces, money is no object. <laughs> That's right. Give me the expensive one. All right, all right. You're not hurting me. I work on commission. (laughs) Just wrap them and I'll pick them up later. Come on, Mary. Uh, Jack, I want to stop them at the lingerie counter. (laughs) I like this shade, miss. I'll take this pair of two-thread hose. You're wrong, lady. This hose is three-thread. Oh, no, it's two-thread. I beg your pardon, but it's three-thread. Listen, sister, don't argue with me. Not so long ago, I was standing right where you are. (laughs) That's Selena, Mary. Well, hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> I see the Yule time is catching up with you. Oh, hello, Mr. Kitzel. Are you doing your Christmas shopping? <laughs> <laughs> the things I am buying for my little daughter, I am buying, uh, you should excuse the expression, a piggy bank. <laughs> And my little boy is at the age where he is going in for sports, but I don't know what to get him. Well, why don't you buy him a badminton set? Yeah, I'll pay a little more and I'll get him a good minton set. <laughs> what? Christmas. Christmas only comes once a year. I guess you're right. But I'm having trouble finding what my wife wants. What's that? A mishmash A what? A mishmash Oh, no, you mean a mix master. That's right, a mix master. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll find one in the appliance department. Uh, thank you. Well, goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye. Mary, uh, Mary, while you're buying the stockings, I'll go over to the toy department and get something for Dennis. All right, Jack, I'll see you later. Well, there you are, Mr. Wilson. How does that shoe feel? Oh, it fits perfectly. I'll take that pair. That's fine. And would you like some extra shoelaces? No, I always get a pair for Christmas. <laughs> Well, that must keep you excited. Yes, I never know whether I'm going to get plastic tips or metal tips. 
Oh. Well, I'll have these shoes wrapped for you in just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Fine. Oh, hello, Don. Well, how are you, Jack? Doing your Christmas shopping? Yeah, I was just going over to the toy department. I just came from there, and I bought you the most novel thing you've ever seen in your life. For me? Yes. In fact, I'm not even going to wait till Christmas. I'm going to show it to you right now. Well, what is it? Look. But, Don, that's nothing but a set of toy wooden soldiers. That's not for me. Just watch what happens when I wind them up. But, Don... Don, it was nice of you to think. Don, I don't want that. It's around you. It's a worm. It's a worm. Better by lucky, better by lucky, lucky strikes the smoke for me. Better try lucky, better try lucky. L S L S M M. Darn it, I'll have to wind them up again. Never mind, Don. I don't want to, but it was a nice thought anyway. See you later. Uh, don't bother wrapping them as a gift. Here you are. Well, thank you. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Miss Livingston. Gee, am I tired. I just walk up to the sixth floor and back. Walk? Why didn't you take the elevator? Well, I was going to take elevator number three, but some man came over and told me it was scratched. <laughs> Friend of Jack. What are you doing here in the music department? Oh, I was just going to buy some records. Here's a swell one, Mary. You want to hear it? Yes, put it on. Okay. I was looking for you. Where have you been? Oh, I was just talking to Dennis. Oh. Now, let me look at that list again, will you? Here you are. Gee, I still have to get a present for my old girl, Gladys the Bisco. <laughs> I don't know what to get her. Do you think she'd like a lipstick? I don't know. She got lips? <laughs> oh. 
don't, don't be so happy. I, I think, uh, I think I'll buy her a bottle of, uh, I think I'll buy her a bottle of perfume. Let's see what else. Oh, yes, I'll have to send something to Fred Allen. Fred Allen? I didn't know you and Fred exchanged gifts. Oh, sure. This year, I'd like to get him something he needs. I wonder what department sells plasma. <laughs> oh, well, come on, I'll get the perfume first. I think it's right over there. Oh, but look, oh, look, there's Jack Benny. Hello! <laughs> What, what's that? May I have your autograph, Mr. Benny? My autograph? Yes, it will make me so very happy. Yes, indeed, so very happy. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to. There you are. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Who was that guy, anyway? What's the difference as long as he's happy? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the perfume counter. What? Here's the perfume counter. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, I'd like to buy some perfume. Okay, mister. What kind of perfume would you like? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know. What's popular right now? Well, here's something that's not too strong, yet leaves a trail of broken hearts. <laughs> oh. It's called Avec Trej a Tambuku My Cherie Tre Bean. What, uh, what does that mean in English? Condensation of steam that's been forced through a motorman's glove. <laughs> They go to so much trouble. No, no, I don't think I'd like that. Well, here's some other perfume called Essence of Smog. <laughs> well, I don't know. Mary, do you think I ought to take a bottle of this? Duh, slightly. <laughs> uh, how much is it, mister? This is 25 bucks an ounce, and the other one I showed you is 30 bucks. Well, haven't you anything a little more reasonable? Yeah. I even have some perfume for 25 cents an ounce. 25 cents an ounce. What kind of a bottle does that come in? It don't come in no bottle. We keep it on tap. <laughs> on tap? I bet they serve pretzels with it. <laughs> well, I don't think I'll take any. By the way, mister, how come they put a fellow like you behind the perfume counter? Oh, my regular job is in a delicatessen department slicing Limburger cheese. <laughs> Limburger cheese? Yeah. Once a month, they send me here to neutralize me. <laughs> well, what do you know? Uh, come on, Mary. Uh, I'll get the perfume later. Let's go home, huh? I'm, uh, I'm tired. Well, don't forget to stop at the notions counter to pick up the shoelaces you bought, the ones with the plastic tips. The shoelaces? Mm hmm I bet... Hey, wait a minute. Did I get the plastic tips? Sure, you went back and changed them. Oh, yeah. You know, Mary, now that I think about it... Yeah! <laughs> yes, Mary, I might as well get what I want, and I'd rather have the metal tips. Come on. Oh, look, there's Rochester buying some neckties. Yeah, and that floor walker's waiting on him. Let's sneak up behind him. I think this tie is beautiful. It's very unusual. Yeah, but I don't think my boss would like it. It isn't his style. <laughs> I see. Uh, what type of man is your boss? Well, he's medium tall, medium weight, and rather conservative. <laughs> you mean he's conservative in appearance? It goes deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's subtle. Quiet, I want to hear this. Now, here's a nice tie. Maybe you'd like this one. Yeah, that's a pretty thing. How much is it? It's only $3.50. How much? $3.50. Too bad he would have liked that one. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, if you don't want to spend quite so much, here's a nice tie for 89 cents. Well, that's close to what I have in mine and wallet. Of course, it might be a little too plain for your boss. Is he a young man? No. Is he middle-aged? 
No. <laughs> Is he elderly? Wrap it up! <laughs> Rochester Van Jones. Oh, hello, boss. I didn't see you. I know you didn't. Don't be buying me any 89 cent ties. You keep out of this. I'm working on commission. <laughs> well, now. Now, look, Rochester, you've been with me 10 years now, and I've been very nice to you. I've always tried to make things pleasant for you and keep you happy, haven't I? I'd like to hear Judge Goldberg's opinion on that. <laughs> Never mind. Now, I'm leaving you here, and I want you to decide for yourself whether or not I'm worth more than an 89 cent tie. Come on, Mary, let's go. Say, Mary, which tie do you think Rochester's gonna buy me? The one for three fifty or the one for 89 cents? Well, if you were Rochester, which one would you buy? I'll fire that guy. <laughs> oh, here we are, Mary. Here's the notions counter. Oh, say, mister. Yes? About the shoelaces I bought. Oh, yes, yes, I've got them all wrapped up. Here you are. Well, I've been thinking about the plastic tips and I think the metal tips would be much better. No, 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 no. But all I, all I want to do is change them. Change them? Change them, he says. This can't be happening to me. This must be a dream. Look, mister. I've always been a good man. Always did the right thing. Look, mister. Worked oh. hard in the store. A loyal employee. Look, clerk. I when the Christmas season started, they gave us our choice of departments. I know. But... I could have had any counter I wanted. But I took shoelaces. Look. Shoelaces! And why? Because I thought it would be easy. Simple. Mister. Look. Metal tips. Plastic tips. And we've got rubber tips, too. But I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> Come on, Mary, there's a crowd forming. Let's get out of here. We'll be back in just a minute, but first, here's my good friend, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And today, tomorrow, always. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Mr. Dewey H. Huffey, an independent tobacco auctioneer of Reedsville, North Carolina, was born and raised in the tobacco business. He said... Season after season, I have seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy tobacco that's mild, ripe, and mellow. Fine tobacco that tastes good and smoked good. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 29 years. Year after year, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Huffine, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco, yes? L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Say, Mary, that department store was certainly crowded, wasn't it? It sure was. And they had so many people working there. It was Mel Blanc, Gerald Moore, Frank Nelson, Benny Rubin, Viola Vaughn, Artie Auerbach, Sandy Bickard, Pete Leeds, Elliot Lewis. And you know those little wooden soldiers that sang? Yeah. Sounded just like that quartet, the sportsmen. I was going to mention my writers, too, but they wouldn't even come in for the show. They stayed in Palm Springs. I hope they run out of suntan oil. Good night, folks. <laughs> NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.